The patient is a healthy 69-year-old man and a non-smoker. Two months before the present intervention, tooth 3-4, which had been endodontically treated in the past, needed to be extracted. In the course of this treatment, the apical tip of the tooth was resected. Site 3-4 therefore exhibited corresponding scars on the vestibular side. A moderate alveolar ridge defect is recognizable in the radiograph. At today's appointment, an implant will be placed at site 3-4. To compensate for the ridge defect, we will perform a minor augmentation with autologous bone and bone substitute material. The augmentation site will be covered with a membrane in accordance with the principles of guided bone regeneration. First, we explore the depth of attachment of the adjacent teeth with a periodontal probe. The surgical procedure starts with a ridge cut from mesially of tooth 35 to distally of tooth 33. This is followed by an initial mobilization of a flap, more cautiously in the lingual direction and more determinedly in the buccal direction. A relief incision vestibularly of tooth 33, slightly offset toward the mesial surface of the root, allows further elevation of a mucoperiosteal flap. The ridge defect now comes into view. The extraction socket and the buccal bone plate, with some tissue loss in the mesial area of the defect, are clearly visible. We prepare the implant bed with a pilot drill under irrigation, following the axial direction of the original tooth 3-4, with the adjacent teeth 3-3 and 3-5 providing additional guidance. The pilot hole is now complete. We finalize the implant bed with a concluding round of irrigated drilling. The implant and its insertion tool are removed from their sterile packaging and mechanically screwed into the implant bed at low speed following the implant manufacturer's instructions. We now detach the insertion tool from the implant. Final primary stability of the implant achieved manually using a ratchet. The implant shoulder is now located just above the bone level. The implant is sealed with a cover screw. The ridge defect is built up with bone substitute material. The Geistlich Bioos collagen protects the site from resorption on the buccal side. The Geistlich Combikit collagen consists of a 16 times 22 millimeter Geistlich Bioguide collagen membrane and a 100 milligram Geistlich Bioos collagen block, which are individually packaged in sterile blisters. Both products should be used together in the same procedure. The Geistlich Bioos collagen block absorbs liquids well. Once we have removed the membrane from its packaging, the paper of the blister pack can be used as a template to determine the proper size and shape for the membrane before working on the actual membrane. To this end, we cut the template to size and hold it against the defect to check its dimensions.
In this case, the template is further adapted to attain a pear-shaped form, ensuring that the membrane will completely cover the implant and the bone defect. The 16 times 22 mm Geistlich BioGuide has two differently textured sides. The outside of the membrane is marked with the embossed word UP. The shape and dimension of the template are now transferred to the membrane. The embossed UP can be clearly seen here again. Once the membrane has been cut to match the template, its broader base is first pushed under the mucoperiosteal flap. The collected autologous bone is applied in close proximity to the implant. The Geistlich BioOS collagen block consists of 90% Geistlich BioOS granules. The remaining 10% is collagen, which holds the Geistlich BioOS granules in the block together. This collagen has no barrier function. The barrier function is provided by the Geistlich BioGuide membrane. The block absorbs liquids very well and is easily divisible and moldable. These properties make the introduction of the bone substitute material into the defect considerably easy. Here we have created a small disc shape which, after its introduction into the defect region, may be further shaped and pressed into place with a suitable instrument, such as a bone rasp. The Geistlich BioGuide membrane is then laid over the Geistlich BioOS collagen. It covers the defect and is wetted with sterile saline. The tip of the membrane is pushed under the lingually mobilized flap. During suturing, we can clearly see the vestibular scar created during the original root resection. The surgical access is initially closed for adaptation of the flap edges with two crestal mattress sutures. For further healing, it is advantageous if the surgical area is tightly sealed with additional interrupted sutures.